Good afternoon. My name is Doug Brazy. I'm an air safety investigator with the National Transportation Safety Board. Let me begin by offering my condolences on behalf of the NTSB to the family and friends of the pilot involved in this tragic accident. I'd also like to thank the Pike County Office of Emergency Management and the Pennsylvania State Police for their hard work and support in our efforts here today. I'd like to tell you a little bit about why we are here. The National Transportation Safety Board is here to investigate the facts and circumstances of this accident. Our purpose is to ultimately determine the probable cause and prevent similar accidents from occurring in the future. I have assembled a team with representatives from the Federal Aviation Administration, the manufacturer of the helicopter, Robinson Helicopters, and the engine manufacturer, Lycoming Engines, to assist me on scene here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the things we'll be looking at. We're going to be examining the helicopter and its engine. We will be documenting the condition as it's been found. We will take measurements of the accident scene itself. How big is it? Where are the marks that may have been left on the ground or in the trees by the helicopter in the accident sequence? And our main goal is to gather anything that may be perishable here at this accident scene. Perishable things are those marks I mentioned earlier that may go away with time, things that uh, will be moved in the recovery process, we need to take pictures of them and document them before they move, and witness statements. Witness statements are perishable because people may forget what they, what they observed over time, uh, so we're interested in any witnesses that may have seen or heard anything that had to do with this helicopter accident, and I'm going to give you a contact information in just a moment if you have any information that can assist us. I have a little bit of information about the flight. The helicopter is a Robinson model R44. Its registration is November 776JM. It departed Doylestown Airport yesterday morning about 11 a.m. destined for Mountain Bay Air Park. to 11.45 That person held a private pilot certificate with a rating for helicopters and he reported 11 and 12. They heard the engine running as it flew over their house, which is about a half a mile from where the airplane impacted the terrain. And shortly after, they heard a loud boom and then another loud boom following that. That's all the information I have about that witness at this time. The safety board will be issuing a preliminary report on our website. It will be available in about 10 to 14 days. It will include all of the basic facts that we gathered here today and up until the point that preliminary report is written. It will not include the cause of the accident. We're at the beginning of a 12-month investigation to try to understand the facts and circumstances of this event. Approximately 12 months from now, the factual report containing all of the information we have gathered will be available in our public docket. And approximately two months later, the National Transportation Safety Board will determine the probable cause of this accident. As I mentioned before, if you were a witness to this accident, if you saw something or heard something, if you would please contact an email address, witness at ntsb.gov, or call our telephone number, our public affairs office, at 202-314-6100. I've got a few minutes for a couple of questions. What took so long to discover, in fact, that this calamity had happened? Because didn't the search start around 9 p.m. last night? I don't know when the search started. Um, I know that the helicopter was found about 11.30 last night. I don't know why it took so long. 
that the helicopter did not reach its destination airport. It started some concern of not having had the sequence of events that led to the beginning of the search. We obviously haven't been able to get back there. Can you describe maybe the debris field? Is you know, What is the helicopter condition? Uh, there was a post-crash fire, so there's some fire damage to the helicopter and the surrounding terrain. The debris field is about 150 feet long, approximately. How far back up off this road is it? Uh, it's up this road maybe a mile, uh, and uh, there's another small two-track gravel road maybe 200 feet off the closest road. So the timeline is that a pro the helicopter went down sometime late yesterday morning, but it wasn't reported missing until approximately 9 o'clock yesterday evening. Is that correct? I don't know when it was reported missing. It's close to what, what you said in the, in the late evening, uh, late afternoon or early evening, but I don't, I don't know precisely what time. Sounds like, what did they ping the, the pilot's cell phone? Is that how they tried to get to wherever the wreckage was. I don't know if they, that is a technology that we do employ, but the Air Force Rescue Center and some of the emergency management folks at Pike, the Pike County uh, Emergency Management Services Office have that technology. I don't know if it was employed in finding this. One more time, departure at Doylestown, what time is that? Approximately 11 a.m. 11 a.m., okay. And the accident happened 30 to 40 minutes later, as best we can tell right now. What's the flying time between the two airports? don't know, but I believe he's only about 10 miles from the destination airport, yep. which was... Greentown? Mountain, Mountain Bay Air Park in Greentown. <clears throat> Obviously, you're in a very dense forest. Does that Sorry. pose a challenge to you in terms of trying to figure out what happened here? It poses a little challenge in accessing the helicopter and being able to uh, uh, take photographs and reach the parts, but it's not anything that's unusual that we have.